A month ago, I posted this on my community page. Several subscribers had asked if I could review the science behind vibration plates, and I didn't want to do that without giving one a go, so I ordered one as a special Halloween gift to the channel. My plan was to try it for 30 days, reflect on my experiences and delve into the science. But it didn't quite go according to plan. In this video, I'll try my best to summarise the science, looking at bone and muscle health from whole body vibration. I'll also explain why I didn't last two days, let alone 30, and I returned my vibration plate for a full refund. Now, before we delve into the science, it's important to say that this video is for information purposes. It's not medical advice because health is personal. And if you want to give a vibration plate a go and you've got a history of osteopenia, osteoporosis or fractures, then it's important you speak to your doctor first. So what is a vibration plate? Well, obviously a plate or a board that vibrates and you stand on it and it transmits these vibrations through your body, causing your muscles to contract because it stimulates them. And then rather than just stand on it quietly buzzing away, you do exercises like some squats. Now, they're said to have several benefits, including improving bone density, strengthening muscle fibres, improving muscle recovery and burning calories. And they cost anything from under £100 to well over a couple of thousand if you're going for one of the all singing, all dancing power plates. Now, I remember those being a feature in gyms in the 2000s and yet they're still going. Now the budget of this channel doesn't extend unfortunately to power plate, so I gave £89 to Jeff Bezos. Sorry. And mine came from a company called Weight World. Now if you're in the States, there's a company called Life Pro. They seem to make a series of good budget options as well. But for me here in the UK, the postage took too long. It was straightforward to use. It plugs into the mains and you control it via buttons on the top. It came with a remote control and some resistance bands, as well as built-in Bluetooth speakers, which were pretty fancy. It promised 99 intensity levels and five built-in presets, not that I tried them all. More on that in a minute, other than to say I didn't have a problem with this particular model, more vibration plates as a whole. Now, in terms of settings, the two variables are frequency and magnitude. So frequency measured in hertz is the number of vibrations it makes a second. Now, the magnitude refers to how much the plate actually moves, which determines how much force it puts through the body. And this can be a fixed preset amount or you can adjust it depending on your model. Now, what about the science? Well, the first thing to say is there's a lot of it. These things have been well studied. So I've concentrated on a type of study called a meta-analysis. I want to take a very quick detour into the hierarchy of scientific evidence to explain what these are. The higher up this pyramid, the better the evidence. Case studies and animal studies are near the bottom. They're not great evidence. So making claims based on studies in rats doesn't stack up to much because rats aren't people. And case studies only look at one person or a handful of people. And we'll come back to case studies later in the video. And right at the top, we have the meta-analysis. I talk about these a lot on this channel, but basically it's a study where they combine the results of lots of different studies to give an overall answer. And because they're significantly increasing the number of participants by doing this, the results are more powerful. And that's why I chose to focus on them in this video. And I also chose to focus on bone and muscle health because these are the things that are really important to over 50s women. So let's address them in turn. And first, bone density. In 2018, there was a review which looked at all the meta-analyses published to date, of which there were 15, which tells you that this is a subject where there's quite a bit of interest. And part of the reason for this may be that up until then, the science really hadn't been conclusive. Some meta-analyses said, yep, yep, there's a benefit regarding bone density, and others said, no, I don't see any effect. And one of the problems with combining studies in meta-analyses is if in their design they're quite different. So, for example, if people were exercising on a vibration plate, was it compared to people exercising not on a vibration plate or people doing no exercise at all? And all the studies that went into these meta-analyses were carried out in mixed sex groups or just in women. There were no studies specifically looking at older men. 
And when they looked at the effects of whole body vibration on the hip bone, nine out of 15 reported a positive effect and six a neutral effect, i.e. it made no difference. And in the spine, seven were positive and eight were neutral. And no study found any detrimental effects. And the review authors concluded that where there were some positive results, the effects were very small, so they were unlikely to be significant out in the real world outside of an experiment. And since that review, there's been a couple of other meta-analyses published, which include newer studies. This one, only published this year, showed no effect of whole body vibration on the bones at the hip or in the lower spine, so the lumbar spine. What it did show was an effect in the femur as a whole, i.e. the whole of the thigh bone, not just the bit at the top which makes up the hip. And this makes sense because obviously you stand on a vibration board, most of the time you'd hope, with your feet. So the bits of your body that are going to feel the vibration most are the bits nearest the floor, i.e. your legs. Now this meta-analysis by De Oliveira et al, published in 2023, well they did something quite clever, they did lots of subgroup analyses, so they broke the big studies down into smaller constituent parts and looked at those. And they found enough quality evidence to say, yep, we're happy to recommend whole body vibration as a way of improving bone density, but particularly of the lumbar spine when certain parameters are met. Namely that the frequency of vibration was high, so over 30 hertz, the magnitude, i.e. the force put through the body, was low, around 0.3 g's. And there was a large cumulative dose, so time spent on the thing, and it was large, around 7,000 minutes. However, if you've got one of these at home, make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions with regard how often you should use it and for how long. So there does seem to be some evidence that vibration plates help with bone density when you use certain settings and you use them for long enough. But again, the effect isn't particularly big, so there's a question as to how relevant this is out in the real world. Now, when it comes to muscle strength, the results are a bit more definitive. So this meta-analysis showed that yes, they did improve leg strength, as did this one, which looked at people over the age of 60, but it found that resistance exercised improved strength more. So the take home is that whole body vibration isn't a substitute for picking up a pair of dumbbells or a resistance band, but it could be a useful add-on. Now, when it comes to recovery, this trial showed that they did reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. That's the burn that you get typically one or two days after working out hard. It didn't increase muscle strength in the recovery period, but it did make the soreness better. So if vibration plays are good for muscle strength and recovery and probably good for bone density, why did I, as an over 50 year old gym user, send mine packing? So two reasons, and the first and the less important one being dizziness. It gave me some serious motion sickness. Now, I once had to have a little bit of a sit down after going on the Simpsons CGI ride at Universal Studios in Florida. So I've got form for motion sickness, although perhaps chances are I would have got used to it with time. So going back to that large 2023 meta-analysis, included in that were 2,089 participants, of which 2.8% reported some sort of side effect. So that was 59 people. And of those, six had to give up the study altogether. And the reasons given were back pain, leg pain or dizziness. But six out of 2,089 is a really small proportion. So it's quite unusual to dislike these things so much that you ditch them altogether. Now, regarding side effects, the authors of that study do caution that most of the studies done were performed for less than a year. So there is a lack of evidence about their long term safety, just not because there's a problem, but because no one's done the work yet, particularly looking at higher magnitudes, so more force, particularly in people with a history of osteoporosis. So they suggest that more research is done. But it was a much rarer potential side effect that made me give it up much, much rarer, as in literally one case study. And I have to thank a long term subscriber and recent client Deborah for highlighting this. And it just goes to show that coaching is a two way street and I learn things from my clients as they learn things from me. Every day is a school day. So thank you, Deborah. And I also learn things when you guys comment on my videos. So keep it up. 
Now, this case report describes a man who suffered a retinal detachment with something called a vitreous haemorrhage. So haemorrhage meaning bleed. The vitreous is the gel like substance that occupies inside the, the back of the eyeball. So he bled into that likely from the retina detaching. And this poor chap got these problems after using a vibration plate at the gym. Now, as you probably know, the retina is right at the back of the eye attached to the wall and it can tear and detach. And that's an eye emergency. It needs urgent surgery with a laser to essentially glue it back on again. Potentially, if you don't, there's a risk of sight loss. And there's been two other cases of people bleeding into the vitreous, no tear this time, just the bleed from using a vibration plate. Although one of them I couldn't find, it was from 2008 in the Journal of French Ophthalmology in French. Now we know that the force from vibration plates can transfer through the body up to the head and apparently the eyeball vibrates at 18 hertz. Who knew? That's my fact of the day. And this paper showed that that force is significantly reduced by bending the knees. But I do want to put this into context because I don't want a fear monger. There are hundreds of thousands of people using these things every day. And I have found three case reports, just three. You're honestly at more risk from driving in your car to the gym than you are from stepping onto one of these things. And we also know from our hierarchy of evidence that case studies are pretty weak evidence. They're basically just anecdote. But the thing is, I am super, super paranoid about my eyes. And you could argue with good reason, seeing as they essentially finished off my last career. And I'm not being dramatic. They really did. If you don't know that story, I'll put a video here so you can go and find out about it. If, of course, you're at all interested. Now, I think about my eyes pretty much every hour of the waking day. I think about them when I take my neuropathic painkillers at night, when I put in the two different types of eye drops I have to put in basically every 45 to 60 minutes. And with the two different types of ointments I have to put in my eyes at night, not to mention going to give blood every three months for my eye drops made from my blood, made from my serum and the weird glasses. It's a lot and it takes up quite a lot of my brain's bandwidth. So anything that could conspire to make my already fairly crappy eyes even more crappy, I'm just not going there however remote the possibility. And I'm already looking after my muscle health because I go to the gym and lift weights three times a week if I'm being organised, occasionally two. So if I wanted to look after my bones a little better, I could, in theory, incorporate some jumping activity as well. So I'm not sure I need a vibration plate. So my cost effective plate, well, that went back to Mr Bezos and the refund went towards buying a few good bits for the channel. So my fairy lights over at the back and my rather lovely new microphone. So in conclusion, do vibration plates work? Well, yes, they seem to for muscle strength and recovery, and they probably have an effect on bone density as well, however small. There are a few very rare side effects reported. And as I said, if you have any specific concerns, please speak to your doctor before using one of these. So I'm interested, what's your experience with vibration plates? Do you use them? Do you like them? Have you noticed any difference? Or did they make you want to lie down in a dark room too? Let me know in the comments. And aside from exercise, the other critical factor in looking after your bone health is making sure you're getting enough calcium in your diet. So I'll leave a video here on calcium rich foods and I'll see you there.